the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Good morning and welcome to worship here in St Mary's and to those who are worshipping with us at home and to those who will join with us later in the week, you're most welcome. Our service again this week is being led by members of our Kirk session and I would now invite three of our elders, Isabel, Alan and Roz, to lead us now in our call to worship. Almighty God, you search us and know us. May we rely on you in strength and rest on you in weakness, now and all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Gracious God, you call us to fullness of life. Deliver us from unbelief and banish our anxieties with the liberating love of Jesus Christ our Lord. Merciful God, Teach us to be faithful in change and uncertainty, that trusting in your word and obeying your will, we may experience the joy of living. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let us worship God. We continue our worship as we sing the hymn 132, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
The psalmist says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord God Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Let us make our approach to God. Let us pray. Almighty, loving and faithful God, as we with your people come into your presence this day, we pray that our worship will be acceptable to you, our Lord and our Redeemer. Bless us as we sing your praise, as we listen to your words of inspiration and challenge, and as we offer ourselves in your service. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have shown us that God is love, love which reaches to all people, love which does not count the cost of loving, and love that never ends. We give you thanks for the assurance and the certainty that we experience through faith in Christ. We praise you because you are the way, the way to God. We praise you that you are the truth, the truth about God. And we praise you that you are the life. Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us the root map for life. Help us to live our lives to the full and forgive us when we live for ourselves and not for others or for you. Loving God, help us in all that we do and say to respond to your promises and challenges of discipleship and renew within us a new zeal for our faith. Hear these our prayers, for we ask them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's great to see so many people here in the church today. Uh, and I should also welcome, I see a few visitors uh, with us this morning, and you are most welcome. Just a few uh, bits of news that I have to share with you. Next Sunday is a special Sunday. Uh, particularly for the junior church because it's promotion Sunday. So I'm hoping to see all of you there again next Sunday when our minister will be back from holiday and he will be leading our service next Sunday. Just a, a word of thanks to June Graham for the beautiful floral decoration which you see on the font which recognizes the 80th anniversary of the Normandy landings. And we will remember this significant event in our history later on in the service in our prayers of intercession. And just a final reminder about Alan Joyce's cycle race on the 30th of June. And again, he will be in the Avon Hall should anyone wish to speak to him or request that they might join him on that 149 mile cycle trip to Aviemore. I've got something to show you boys and girls. Something that I was awarded, awarded, that means presented with on several occasions before. And I've used it since then when I've been doing baking. Would you like to see it? Well, it's a wooden spoon. Now, this is a very useful piece of equipment and we are going to use it today 
In fact, not only have I got one wooden spoon, but I've got eight wooden spoons to share with the brightest and best. Who would like a wooden spoon? Oh, oh, oh. Right, here we go. No one in the Y zone wanting a wooden spoon? Right, wooden spoon. Ba bum. Wooden spoon. Ta da. Yay, wooden spoon. Ba -bum. Who else said they wanted a wooden spoon? Oh, two over here. Oof, yes, two over here. Now, I might not have enough for, for everybody. It might be a slight challenge. But if I don't have a wooden spoon, I'll get you something special after. Oh, there's one over there. Oh, I've got two more wooden spoons. Now, I tell you, we might be able to do this. Oh, and there's one. Oh, yes. Get, can you give one to Emily at the other end there? Right, there you are. Now, can, what's this wee girl's name? What's this wee girl's name? Lottie. Lottie. What a lovely name. Now, do you think Lottie's mum could do this at the same time as holding Lottie? Give it a bash. Give it a bash. You're on. Now, here's the task. Would all those who have a wooden spoon come out to the front? Okay? Bring your wooden spoons out to the front. Now, can you stand here? Anywhere at all? You stand here, you stand here. You stand there, you stand there, you stand there. You stand there, you stand there, you stand there. You stand there. Yes, you stand there. Right, okay, how many have we got? Oh, for goodness sake, this is wonderful. Now, this is great. So we've got one two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this is an eight here. Right, now, I said that this was a very useful thing because what you can do with this, what you can do with this is you can create a human xylophone. Okay, so hit your pipes. Come on, boing, do a boing. Hit them. You haven't got pipes. Oh, wait a minute. Wait till we see what we've got here. Oh, my goodness me. Oh, right, you go there. There's number two. Thank you. you hold that. And you go there. Oh, 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 oh for goodness sake. Well, one, two, three. You go there. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh. Uh, one, two, three, five, six, uh, five, five, okay, and we've got a uh, seven, and we've got a, uh, oh, who's not got one? Oh, you haven't got one. You're a three, right, and you're a, an eight, right. Now, what I want you to do is, I want you to do what I was doing. I want you to hold them up like this, right, hold them up like this, right, hold them with the string, Hold them quite high and just give it a good bong. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Now, we're just, going to, we're just going to test. We're just going to test. I don't know if I would get through there. Wait a, I need to slim a thing. Right, hold it. Right, here we go. Right, now, now, what is it they say? Never play with children or animals. <laughs> right, here we go. Right, right, now. This is a very important one, so you might have to help, right? So, could you try hitting that one, Lottie? Hit it. Hit it. Oh, oh hold, hold it with the string and then it sounds good. That's it. Excellent. Right, next one. Next one. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This one doesn't sound right. Hit that one again. No, that one doesn't sound right. Okay, wait a minute. Right. Okay. You hold that. Try it again now. Try it again now. That's it. Right, now, that's, we should have a scale. Right. Right, you ready, Lottie's mum? Right. Now. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to play for you. We're going to play for you Ravel's. No, we're not. We're going to, we're going to play Jesus Loves You. Steady Lottie's mum. 
okay? Because this, this all hinges on you, Lottie, because you're playing a lot of notes, right? Okay, so now, if I tap you on the shoulder like this, you have to hit it, hold it high, hold it high. That's it, if I tap you there, right? If I tap you there, that's good. Lottie's mum. Perfect. Now, here we go with Jesus loves me, right? Okay, here we go. Lottie's mum. Lottie's mum. Lottie's mum. Oh, how is that? Right. You all go and sit down. Leave your pipes at the front. Okay. All go and sit down. That's great. That was thank you, Lottie's mum. Now. Now, how good was that? I thought you were excellent. Excellent. You played very well indeed. And you worked very well indeed. It was good teamwork. And you all listened carefully to the instructions. And you carried them out. And the end result was excellent excellent and you know that's just a bit like junior church because you come every week to junior cup and being a member of junior church means that you play together very well you work very hard together when you're making crafts and you listen carefully to what your teachers tell you about God and about Jesus and because of that you are better people and God loves you and he cares for you and that's why we can all sing together Jesus is wonderful and we're going to sing that now you remember we had a new band last week you remember that they were marvelous they were marvelous now this band if you get up now we've got two new members of the band this week because our maracas player who was going off to the conservatoire is actually at Murrayfield at the moment queuing up to see Taylor Swift. And our piano player from last week is in Italy. So we have Murray on piano. Fraser, Murray's his wee brother. And we have one of our Junior church leaders, Ava, you need to turn around, Ava, because everybody will need to see you. <laughs> Ava is, has been practicing all week, and Ava is this week on Maracas. Okay? Very important. Right, now, there are four verses. Jesus' love is very wonderful, and we'll sing that without any clapping. The second verse is so high, and that's the verse that we do the actions. So high you can't get over it, so low you can't get under it. So wide you can't get around of it. Oh, wonderful love. Then the third verse, and this is where we need some syncopation. It's love, love, wonderful love, 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 wonderful love, 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 wonderful love, oh, wonderful love. I think you can manage that. And then we go back to the last verse again, which is actually the first verse, and we're just going to clap our hands, and we're all going to stand to sing, Jesus' love is very wonderful. Stand to sing. Jesus.
Now, you're going off to Junior Church in Wise Zone. Thank you to the man, thank you to the Wise Zone and to the Junior Church, and we'll see you all later. Our scripture readings today will be read by another of our elders, Joanne, Joanne Hamilton. But before that, let's sing together the hymn, 600, Spirit of God, Unseen as the Wind. And we'll remain seated as we sing this hymn.
Our Old Testament reading is Psalm 100, verses 1 to 5, a hymn of praise. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. The New Testament reading is Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 38. God's love in Jesus Christ. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. May God bless this reading of his holy word. Amen. We're now going to sing hymn 175. Praise, I will praise you, Lord, and we're going to stand to sing. Do you ever hear yourself saying, where's it all going to end? 
where's it all going to end? Or I don't know what the world's coming to. Or I can't be certain about that. Or I'm just not sure. I'm in two minds what to do. Here's a question. Do you ever look at the world and with all its uncertainties and crave for more certainty? I suppose it's no exaggeration to say that we're living in uncertain times. But I'm also convinced that each generation at one time or another has said we are living in uncertain times. Today, as we look across the world, we see uncertainty between nations, tensions between the right and the left-wing politics, between the rich and the poor, between the haves and the have-nots. In our own nation, with an impending election, there is the inevitable uncertainty surrounding the outcomes and what the future might hold. In our national church, there is uncertainty with all the proposed changes for worshipping congregations. Congregations up and down the country and the pain and the anguish that these changes may bring to many. And in our families where day by day, sometimes hour by hour, there are moments of uncertainty. Uncertainty that causes us to pause and think and we cling on earnestly for clarity and certainty. The Bible acknowledges the reality of uncertainty in our lives, presenting it as an inevitable aspect of our human experience. However, the scriptures also offer profound wisdom and comfort for navigating uncertain and difficult times. You see, the Bible teaches us that facing uncertainty with faith very often strengthens our reliance on God. It was the late chief rabbi Jonathan Sachs, who said, I believe that faith in itself does not guarantee certainty, but that it is faith that gives me the courage to face uncertainty. In addressing uncertainty, the Bible doesn't offer a blueprint or a way to avoid the unpredictability of life. Rather, it provides principles for living for living faithfully in life's uncertainties. And cert certainly central to its message is a call to trust in God, to trust in his promises, and to trust in his providence. God's view of our uncertainty is compassionate and it's understanding. He knows our need for security. He knows our need for direction. And as the psalmist says, he invites us to seek refuge in him. The scriptures are filled with stories of individuals and communities who faced uncertain futures. Yet they experienced God's guidance, God's provision, and God's protection as they trusted in him. When dealing with uncertainty, the Bible ultimately points to a life of faith marked by trust in God, adherence to his word, and the comfort of knowing that in all things God, God works for good of those who love him. I'm sure like me, you have your favorite Bible story or your favorite Bible verse, a verse or a story that has a special meaning or a, a resonance with you, and maybe even a special place in your heart. Let me share just three verses, which to me sum up 
why we are more likely to experience certainty, certainty in an uncertain world. Firstly, from Hebrews chapter 13 and at verse 8, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In our prayers, we often use the words eternal God because we worship a God who exists outside of time. God is not bound by the limitations of the past or the present or the future. And so when we face uncertainty, we can rely on God's unchanging nature in a God who remains faithful at all times. I just love the chorus, and we might just sing it someday. <clears throat> Yesterday, today, forever, Jesus is the same. All may change, but Jesus never. Glory to his name. What a certainty in an uncertain world that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then a second verse or verses from Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. Joanne read these words to us, but the words I used today will be from the King James authorized version, where it says this, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers present or things to come, nor height nor depth or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Probably one of the most difficult and debilitating of emotions to deal with is that of separation. Separation from family and loved ones. Separation from the things that we hold dear. But Paul in his epistle or letter to the Romans says, no matter what happens, no matter the circumstances, that nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. What a certainty in an uncertain world. And thirdly, probably the most often quoted Bible verse that there is from the Gospel, <coughs> of St. John chapter 3 and at verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. What a statement for God so loved the world, and that's a fact, that he gave his only son, and that was an act like no other, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, and that is the pact that he has made with each one of us, a fact an act and a pact. What a statement. What a sacrifice. And what an assurance. John 3.16 is a constant reminder which underpins our faith and breathes certainty into an uncertain world. Finally, let me close by quoting from C.S. Lewis, the writer and the lay theologian in the Anglican tradition and from his book, Mere Christianity. 
And in it he said, I believe in Christianity in the same way as I believe that the sun has risen. Not only because I see it, but because it's rising, I see everything else. C.S. Lewis was convinced that faith in Christ illuminates our understanding of the world. And just as the rising sun reveals the landscape, so too our faith provides clarity and comfort, purpose and promise, and yes, undoubtedly, certainty in an uncertain world. Amen. We now sing the hymn 559. There is a Redeemer, Jesus God's own Son, precious Lamb of God Messiah, Holy One. We continue our worship as we offslip our offering.
Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for all that you have provided for us, for the richness of the countless material things we enjoy, for wisdom, for understanding, for compassion, and for our faith. Encourage us in our daily lives to be willing to share with others all that we have. And now we ask that you will accept and bless these gifts of money, along with our commitment to faithfully serve you and honour your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, Ian Carl is going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. In Psalm 145, at verse 18, it says, The Lord is near to all who call on him. Let us join in prayer. Ever-present Lord and Father, we give thanks that we can speak to you in the certain knowledge that you are always ready to hear our prayers. We give thanks that we have been able to come here this morning to worship you and hear your word. We pray for your church, both here in St Mary's and worldwide. We ask your blessing on all who minister to gatherings of your people, spreading your message of love and hope. We also pray for others who give of their time and talents to share the good news through various church organisations. May they be encouraged and strengthened in the work that they do in your name. In a week when the nation has commemorated the D-Day landings of 80 years ago, we honour and give thanks for the thousands who fought and gave their lives so that we could live securely in freedom and peace. We pray, Heavenly Father, for your world today, for the leaders of nations, and for those in authority under them. Give them all a desire to work for international unity, seeking to halt war and terrorism. We pray for a vision of your world as you would want it to be, where all people live in harmony and freedom and experience justice security and peace. Loving Father, we bring before you those who have lost their way in life for various reasons. Addictions, financial hardship, broken relationships. They are in need of direction and your guidance. We pray that you will show them the way forward and give them the strength to follow it. Lord, be their light and their lamp, their shepherd and their guide. We remember those who are facing challenges through illness. We pray for restoration and wholeness of their bodies. Lord, we pray for medical professionals involved in their care, that you would grant them wisdom, skill and compassion. May your healing power flow through them and bring comfort and relief to those who are suffering. Now in the silence, we bring our own prayers to you for those that we know and love. Lord God, on whom all our hope is founded, as we go from this church today, we ask that in all that we do and say, we may walk more closely with you by our side, safe in the knowledge that in this uncertain world, you are always there for us. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Lord, I accept these are prayers. Amen. We close our service today by singing the hymn 192, All My Hope.
on God is founded. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Saviour. And may grace, mercy and peace from God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us and with all those whom we love this day and forevermore.